Hello and welcome to the JBNM Sports Fanatic channel. Thank you for joining me for this video. And the Atlanta Falcons, they've signed an offensive lineman, William Sweet. So um, William Sweet will be brought on to add some depth um, to the offensive line for the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously, priority number one is going to be protecting Matt Ryan. I mean, that's where all their investment is on the offensive side of the ball. And so it's going to be key to make sure that not only, yeah, the offensive lineman um, to protect them, but that you also have some capable backups as well. And so William Street will be competing for a roster spot with the Falcons, and it'll be intriguing to see if he's able to land a spot or land on the practice squad. And so a little bit about him. He went undrafted when he came into the league out of North Carolina, and his first um, stint was with the Arizona Cardinals, in which he was with them um, in 2019. And then he was placed on IR um, from the Ravers. And then after that, he was signed by the San Francisco 49ers, and he remained with them until sometime of September of 2020. And then from um, there, he was placed on the practice squad for the Dallas Cowboys. So he did get to go to the practice squad for the Cowboys for a little bit, all the way through um, the all the way through really March of 2021. And so this is um, I'm sorry, not March. Um, up until recently, uh, very recent, this past um, like a few days ago, when the Cowboys chose to waive him. Um, so, yeah, that would be May of this year. And so he was um, waived and picked up by the Atlanta Falcons, claimed off of their waivers for the Cowboys. And so now he has a great opportunity in front of him to really just show, like, okay, I need to be somewhere um, for a consistent while, you know, impress the coaching staff enough. I mean, he's a big guy, six foot six, about 315 pounds, you know, and anytime you get a player, you know, from North Carolina, he came out of college. He was a four star recruit, actually when they um when he went to North Carolina and just a little bit of his um backdrop. And so yeah, he um at twenty sixteen he was a redshirt freshman. Uh well he was redshirt in twenty fifteen. I'm sorry, in twenty sixteen he got to play as a redshirt freshman. He appeared in all thirteen games and started um in a couple wins that they had against um you know, like Virginia and so North Carolina State as well. He had a season high eleven knockdowns versus University of Virginia. And so they graded him out at a season best 88% in the win over Georgia Tech. And then um, you fast forward to 2017, his sophomore year, he started the first three games of the season before suffering a season ending knee injury um, and a win that they had against Old Dominion. And so obviously, you know, that ruined um, the rest of his season there. And so you fast forward to 2018 as a junior, he started all 10 games. He appeared in at left tackle, Blocked for an offense that averaged 442.1 yards per game, which was 31st in the NCAA. And there's a lot of NCAA teams, so 31st is pretty good, um, including 193 yards rushing um, per contest. Led an offense line that allowed less than a sack per game. And so that, that's pretty good. I mean, earned the team's lineman of the week honor three times. He graded out at an 80 or above in seven of the nine games that were graded. And so, um, yeah, definitely – um, was off to a tremendous start. Now, he did declare after his junior year, so he um, didn't come back for his senior year, and so that might have been part of what contributed to him going undrafted, especially if you missed your um, sophomore year, you know, due to a knee injury. And so, yeah, it just um, – he probably should have went back for another year, but he, he decided to come out, which I definitely understand and respect that. Um, and then just, um, you know, off the physical profile that they have for him when he was coming out of the combine – um, he ran at 4.27, uh, um, and he benched 225 pounds 23 times. His vertical was a 30.5, and his broad jump was 9.3. And so, and the three cone, he ran, yeah, he ran a uh, 8.01. And so, he has the NFL size, you know, um, pretty good, uh, well, adequate speed and strength. And so, they're saying also slightly below average quickness. So, yeah, definitely. It probably would have bode him well to go back another year at North Carolina. But with that being said, though, he's still out there competing. You know, he's getting the um, experience. He started the year early, you know, all these different teams, you know, being on practice squads, you know, especially for how long he's with the Cowboys and stuff. So definitely a great opportunity for him to continue to learn and develop. And so we'll see if he's able to land a spot here with the Atlanta Falcons moving forward. Um, the Falcons, in terms of what they currently got already, now we all know last year with their offense, they, you know, even though they didn't result in very many wins, they were still one of the top offenses in the league. I mean, Julio is still Julio. 
You know, Calvin Ridley had a tremendous season last year. You know, they, they could have used more in the ground game, but I will say that, you know, um, Todd Gurley did not live up to expectations, and so the Falcons did need a running game. But in terms of passing, they were spot on. And then you add the addition of what many people are saying, the best um, tight end, you know, like to come out of the draft, like possibly ever. Time will tell if that remains to be true. But Kyle Pitts is definitely a tremendous talent, no doubt about that. And so they add him. They still have, you know, Hayden Hurst, you know, at the tight end position as well. And plus what I mentioned earlier, receiver. And so, yeah, they definitely – well, we all have to wait and see what happens with Julio Jones, I should add, you know, because he could very well be traded um, by the time the calendar hits June. But as of right now, when this video is being made, you know, he's still with the team, so I'm just going to talk as if he's still going to stay. But with that being said, definitely protecting uh, Matt Ryan is going to be key. And so, um, yeah, certainly I'm looking forward to seeing how they go about doing that. Um, but he's going to have a lot of competition. You know, the Falcons, they have quite a good amount of offensive linemen that are going to be competing for these spots. And so we'll see how the chips fall um, at the end of the day. But certainly he'll be able to go out there and show the coaching staff what he can do, and we'll see what goes in there. Um, but thank you so much for joining me for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, as more news continues to drop, you can be sure to find it here. So thanks again for watching, and see you guys next time.